was all the way back with Mulan. Now that was horrible. <laughs> Don't even want to think about it. But today we're here reviewing a good movie. We are taking a look at the sequel to the 2017 The Babysitter. We are taking a look at The Babysitter Killer Queen. Now... My god, the first Babysitter movie was fantastic. I mean, I'm only after finishing The Jobber Sitter. I've literally finished that today. I'm recording this on Wednesday, which is my day off. This is going up on Thursday night. So I've literally just finished The Jobber Sitter right now. You can go read it, link in the description. You're welcome. And I will be starting The Killer King. Oh yeah, I love these posters, man. <laughs> but Killer Queen is taking place two years after the first movie. And again, we're back with Cole. Again, from the first movie, same actor. And we also have Melanie. Melanie. Yeah. Melanie. Yeah. My God. <laughs> Can't speak. Melanie uh, from the first movie as well. Same actress. Although in this movie, she's kind of got a douchey boyfriend and no one really believes Cole about all the stuff that took place in the first movie about the killers, about Max, John, Allison, Sonia and B, the cult. No one believes Cole about any of that. Not even his parents. Even though at the end of the first movie, they were like, what happened? Like, look at our house. There's a car driven into your house. What is up with that? But you don't believe him. Nobody believes him. Your parents think you're crazy. And they want to lock him up in an insane asylum. A fucking insane asylum. <laughs> you want to lock your child up in an insane asylum because you think he's going batshit crazy. But I think the only one who actually somewhat believes him is obviously Melanie because she was there that night where B was trying to kill Cole and she witnessed all of it but she's like oh, I don't want to talk about it there's this new kid in class Phoebe um played by Jenna Otega brilliant actress again she's kind of like the new girl who's been transferred to the school she says she's pregnant but she's actually not we find out later that she's not really pregnant she just said that to get everyone off her back and to get away from his parents Cole goes away on this weekend trip with Melanie the boyfriend Amanda, Amanda Cernin makes a cameo in this movie I don't know why actually I do know why because it was pretty obvious why they put her in but they get to this place they go out on this boat and they're having the time of their lives Melanie and Cole have two minutes in heaven, that's four, two minutes in heaven, and they're in the closet, they're kissing, <laughs> their tongue, all right, calm down, <laughs> but then the truth is out, they start asking Cole questions about the cult, and how crazy he is, and then Melanie mentions about the devil's book, but Cole never mentioned the book. And that's when we get the big truth that this is all for the sacrifice again. The guy who directed this, he upped the antes on the killing stuff. Like you look at the deaths in the last movie. Max got hung. Um, 
Sonia got blown up, Alison got her head blown off, and John got his head impaled by a trophy. So the deaths were really bad in this one, and that one, so they, they upped the empties in this one, and oh my god. You get to see Max, still with no shirt on. John comes back, Sonia comes back, Allison comes back. But there's just the four of them. No sign of B. Where's B? From what we know in the last movie, she got crushed by a car and then just whoo, disappeared. She was gone, no sign of her. But in this movie, it's just the four main characters, the four main killers. Melanie, her boyfriend, and some other guy. So again, the craziness is Stu's. Sonia is the first to die. Oh my god, just even thinking of Sonia's death. She gets impaled against a, like a, a rock and like a surfboard flies off the car and just oof, whacks her head off and it's fucking brutal. The first time I seen it, I was like, Oh my god, everything just happened, everything just happened, oh my fucking god. Then the next person to die is Allison. Allison is the next to die. She gets her head ripped off. Like really brutal. She gets her head stuck, she gets her body stuck between these rocks. And then Max, uh, not Max, um, Cole and Phoebe have to try and pull her out because Phoebe showed up to the cabin looking for gas or something and then they escaped that way. But they try and pull her out and as they're pulling, you can see like the thing ripping from her body and then ah, uh, no, even just thinking about it. And the, the, the funny thing is with this movie, they introduced little backstories for John, for Max, for Allison and for Sonia, how you see how B recruited them. Sonia was doing makeup. John wanted to be a platinum rapper. Max just had his shirt off, working in a kitchen, wanted to throw hot oil over someone. And Allison wanted to be a journalist, so she was doing like a news interview or something. And then she throws a hissy fit and B just randomly shows up in all these places. The second person to die is Max. And oh my god, Max's death compared to his death in the original where he gets hanged. This one, he gets his face completely chopped off by a fucking blade rotor on a boat. And the blood just goes everywhere. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, that's so bad. <laughs> and then it's down to John, Melly, the boyfriend, and the other guy. But then they blow up. They don't want to be a part of this. They're like, holy shit, this is bad. We don't want to be a part of this. And then they just blow up. So it's down to Melanie and John. Melanie then phones Cole's dad and is like pretending to be all innocent. Oh, we're down here. Cole had a little bit of drink. We had a little too much. And now he's talking about the cult. He's talking about all this crazy stuff. And I'm just scared. So we find out that Phoebe was going to a cabin in the woods. And there's this whole backstory about her that apparently she killed her parents, which apparently is true. Like she was in the car with someone else when her parents were driving down the road and they crashed and they went over a cliff or something. Which that has an interesting plot, which I'll get to in a second. But John eventually meets his demise. Cole has like a crossbow and he fires it at John and he's like, ah, you missed, takes a sword. Goes, it goes to attack Cole, but he swipes at something, and then this, like, antler thing drops down and just goes in his mouth. And, oh, God, even, like, thinking of that one is even horrible. But all the deaths in this, Melanie then kidnaps Phoebe after this weird um, street fighter thing that they go back and forward and do. Cole's dad injects him with, like, some injection thing. Like some drugs and Phoebe um, also makes out with Cole at one point and they do this weird dance number and Melanie also kills her dad. She chops off both his arms and then just stabs him in the gut so that's nice. 
nice daughter father moment there. <laughs> and we end with B coming out of the water. Everyone comes back again. Max, John, Allison, and Sonia, they all come back. Melanie's there, they get Cole's blood, because he comes back all Terminator 2 style. They get Cole's blood, they drink it, but then they start feeling a little bit queasy. And B is the only one who doesn't drink it. And she goes, well, you're not so innocent anymore, are you? Cole and Phoebe, <laughs> got it on. So now Cole isn't innocent, and they've just drunk his blood. The only one who's proud is Max. Max is like, you fucking stud, Cole. I'm not even mad, bro. I'm not even mad. Respect. And then they all blow up. We find out how Melanie got recruited, that she wanted to be an influencer or some shit. So B had orchestrated this whole thing to get back at them, to the party in the first movie. Cole changed her that night. Okay. <laughs> But it ends with B drinking the blood because she had made a deal with the devil. Because it turned out she was the one in the car with Phoebe that night. Phoebe recognized her when she came out of the water. And my god, it was literally the best thing ever. Cole's dad watches uh, B spiral away. And it's a happy ending. So, I mean, this movie by far... Better than the original? Yes. Up the antes on the death count? Yes. I've seen so many people shitting on this movie, and I don't know why. It's fantastic. I loved it. I, I, I particularly love Max. That's why I made myself Max in my story. Yes, I haven't got the abs like Robbie and Mel, but fuck you. <laughs> Guys, that's going to do it for this review ski. God knows what my next review will be, because, you know, movies are kind of slow at the moment. No new ones are coming out until next year. Black Widow got delayed. No Time to Die got delayed. A lot of stuff getting delayed. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought of Killer Queen, and if you say anything bad. I don't know why. I don't know why you would say something bad about this movie. It, it was brilliant. I loved it. That's all that matters. <sighs> Toodle pip.